True Paranormal Stories to Listen Before Sleep Redditor42 Worked in a restaurant that had the story of a patron who had died from choking in the back dining room. Multiple people had reported incidences like phone cords swinging when they were the only one there. Sounds of someone coughing or walking around. The wait staff said the candles in the back dining room would relight between when they were blown out for the night and the final walkthrough. I started out as the dishwasher there. I would constantly hear someone whistling in my ear. One day, we had been talking about the ghost and some of the happenings. I was standing in the wait station in front of the swinging door into the kitchen. This door was an old wooden door with the original hinges that were supposed to hold it open when needed. You could get them to work, but you had to push the door open several times and kind of wiggle it just right. It also had a diamond-shaped window to keep you from running into people coming through the other way. I was standing talking to Becky, one of the waitresses, while I was holding an empty dish rack in both hands in front of me. As I turned to go through the door, in swung in toward the kitchen side and stayed open. No one was seen through the window, and the door stayed perfectly open. Becky and I turned back to each other with big eyes and just stare and then turn and stare back at the open door. The only other person there at the time was Mike, the cook. I yelled out, Mike, where you at? He calls back, in the window, why? I ask, did you open the door? What are talking about? So I told him what happened. He walks over from the window, which was about five foot away. He looks at the door and said he had been in the window cut in veggies the whole time. No explanations for it and never happened again. I'm glad it one other person saw it. The ghostly happenings quit after they completely remodeled and made the back dining area part of the expanded kitchen. Redditor 43, ooh, I've got a creepy one. It's not so much an act, but I'll explain anyway. When I was younger my brothers and my dad watched some horror film don't know what the name was, but I hate horror films so I didn't watch. Anyway after the film my brothers go to sleep, they slept in the same room with a bunk bed. My father slept in my room cause I had a pull out bed below mine I was really young at the time so it's not weird a few hours into the night one of my brothers come to my room really distressed, sweating and everything. He says that he and my other brother feel really unsafe in the room and are having really bad nightmares. So me and my dad swap rooms with them and go to sleep. Here is where it gets weird. Me and my dad start having nightmares and sweats and keep waking up. Just a reminder I never watched the movie. Regardless we sleep through it. The next morning at the breakfast table I'm describing the nightmare I had and my brothers and my dad are looking at me like I just died. Then they say they had the exact same nightmare, down to every detail. I will never mess with horror films cuss of that experience. Redditor44, to preface this, I'm as inclined now as I was then to not consider the following story a paranormal experience, but it was the only time I ever went through anything remotely spooky, and I am as clueless now as I was then about the truth of that situation, so I think I don't have a choice but to regard it as paranormal. My sister and I slept in the same bedroom when we visited our childhood home in the summer some years ago. One night we woke up to what seemed to be heavy jostling noise at our bedroom door. It became clear to us what the sound was immediately someone was forcing the door open by roughly twisting and turning the doorknob. We looked at each other with wide eyes, alert unease quickly replacing sleep. The knob shaking had obviously been going on for a little while now it was incessant and no one was speaking to us through the door. Not a low voice or whisper calling out. Nothing but the doorknob being turned forcefully again and again. Is that dad? I asked my sister. When I woke she was already up. Maybe she even shook me awake actually. So maybe our father had called out before I woke up. But I knew that made no sense for several reasons, one being that she would have already opened the door for him. She also looked a little scared. That could only mean she thought it was probably not him, or anyone else in the house we had our grandma in the next room, and two aunts across from us. They didn't sleepwalk or have any other nocturnal habits of the sort. I don't know, she whispered. We both knew it was highly unlikely. We were teenagers then, so we were probably more ready to imagine, well, the stuff of horror movies. But even in my half-asleep state I knew it was a legitimate fear. The person at the door forcing themselves in was not likely to be anyone we knew at all, including our father. 
He worked the night shift back then, and always told us ahead when he'd get home or if he would come home early. So that night, whether he had come home early or on time, we would have already been long in bed, so there was never reason for him to come knocking, let alone at two in the morning, which is when this all went down if my memory is any good. He had definitely never done it before. And if this was the first time, why would he do it by harassing the doorknob wordlessly? Dad? I called, knowing along with my sister that it could only be an intruder. No answer. Just whoever, whatever, if you will, it was on the other side of the door untiringly twisting the knob. I must have called out to the doorknob shaker a few more times and became equal parts panicked and annoyed because eventually I opened the door and even peered into the pitch black hallway. My sister freaked out a little at this. You can probably guess what I saw. Yeah, nothing. No one was there. It's true I could see literally nothing in the dark, but the doorknob was still being manhandled up until I opened the door. So they couldn't have gone anywhere in that instant without me detecting them right? I even called out to my dad as soon as I saw there was no one, my fear partly shifting to confusion. His room was right next to ours, but I didn't hear any footsteps near it nor his door closing and opening. I don't think it's dad, I said to my sister. Soon my eyes adjusted enough for me to make out the dark corridor. There really was nobody. And the doorknob was silent again. That is, until I went back into our room. Can you believe it? It's since we can all agree by now that wasn't a person or anyone I could account for didn't even wait for us to settle back into bed. The doorknob thrashing restarted a moment after I closed and relocked the door behind me. By the way, Another reason it couldn't have been our dad since he started going to the office at night he specifically instructed us to keep our door locked after we got into bed. So it was a strange occurrence to us from the get-go. If it was an emergency, they would have binged on the door and yelled for us to wake up, whether it was dad or an aunt or grandma. When I ponder it over again the shoving of that doorknob is the most irrefutable thing to me along with the voiceless urgency of it. We never heard knocking or binging on the door itself, just the insistent, frantic shaking to unlock the knob, any way to keep it no longer than this already is, my sister and I lay in bed awake terrified for the rest of the knob jerking, and really, the whole door itself, which lasted for two more hours at least I remember drifting back to sleep at about four. I also particularly remember sweating from the stress of just laying there having to listen and imagining what it could be. It was pretty awful. A few times we thought the door would break down the frenzy would grow more desperate and reach a violent peak so that I had to visualize what I'd do in case the intruder would be successful. They even actually stopped sometimes, and we'd think it was over, until they began again. Over and over for hours. I could almost make myself believe I was having a dream. Fear gripped me in a mix with bewilderment and anxiety and I couldn't even offer any consolation to my equally horrified sister. But like I said, I think it died down and eventually stopped without us having to wait for daybreak. The next day we talked about it with wonder, dread, and disbelief, and acknowledged that it was very real. We asked our father, who told us he did come home the night before, but that he hadn't knocked on our door or dropped by our room. It was so late already, and there was no reason to. I don't think we told him why we were asking. Nothing was amiss that night apparently no thieves or night robbers, no broken locks on the front gate. We didn't believe in the supernatural, and still don't, but until now, both of us can only conclude that it was something unexplainable. Edited grammar and stuff. Redditor 45, I've experienced it a lot when I was a kid and only once as an adult. While I was writing a few experiences I felt a strange chill down my spine so I'll skip the really terrible ones because I really don't want to remember that. But when my sister and I were kids I'll never forget living in this house and always hearing my name get called. Woke up one night to my sister screaming and the light was green. Saw this kid watching her and I literally froze. Sister ran and turned on the lights and he was gone. I still don't believe in ghost, I try my hardest to forget the terrible things I've seen. I don't want to believe it, I think logical even though I cannot think of an explanation for some of the things I've seen. But I really feel sympathy for those who get called crazy for seeing things that they can't explain. I know exactly how they feel. Redditor 46, in Ottawa, Ontario there is a hostel that used to be a jail. It is the last place in Canada that an execution took place. 
Legend has it that the place is haunted. I stayed there with my wife on Halloween 2019. You stay in a tiny former jail cell with communal bathrooms. It's super creepy but also really cool. When I stayed there I experienced two thing I would consider paranormal. One during the night, on several occasions I awoke up to the sound of clanking. Almost as if a guard was walking by and dragging his baton along the cell bars, doesn't seem like much but I wonder. The second, I had a timer set on my phone to wake me up at a certain time. After it went off I decided I wanted an extra 30 minutes to sleep, so I set another time and placed my cell phone back on the ledge. I awoke to my phone landing on me. Now my phone was completely on the edge and the charger was plugged in out of reach. When I was awoken by this I grabbed my phone to see less than 30 seconds was left on the timer. Almost as if someone or something didn't want to hear the alarm again. Redditor 47, I live in a haunted house. Here are things that happen here. We all hear conversations taking place, they are very whispery, you cannot understand the words, just the separate voice tones. We have gone room to room, looked outside, checked any audio we might have playing. There has never been an explanation. One evening I went to make sure the front door was locked. Hubby said, don't lock that, daughter grown is outside. Me, no she isn't. I go check, she is in her bedroom and says she has not left the room for quite some time and did not go outside. Hubby insists he saw her leave. One morning I get up, see daughter sitting at small kitchen table, she is drinking coffee, I wonder why she is home so late she works a very early shift, turns out, she had been gone for more than an hour when I saw her. Hubby lost a permanent marker, looked everywhere, few days later he was complaining to neighbor who was visiting. They were sitting at the small table in the kitchen popular place in the house, saying he really needed it. It dropped out of the middle of the air onto the floor. Hubby was shocked. Scared neighbor so bad he left. We think one of the ghosts is a child who likes to play. Hubby would go to bed, something would pull on his big toe. Several nights go by, I say, tell it to stop so hubby does, explaining he had to get up early and needed to sleep. It stops. Months go by. We decide to prank hubby and have grandson belly crawl into the bedroom not long after me and hubby go to bed we are old, no worries about any surprises there, grandson succeeds does it three times before hubby caught him. Everyone laughs. Grandson returns to the other area of the house living area to watch TV with his mom and sister. Few minutes later, a tug on the toes. Hubby yells for grandson. From other side of the house grandson answers, what it wasn't, tee him. So many more tales to tell. Been here years and years, these are just the ones I think of on the spot. Redditor 48. When I was younger around 4 to 7 I was hiding under my bedsheets pretending I was hiding in a cave. I then heard something say hello and I saw from the corner of my eye two red eyes and a mouth of teeth. I screamed and my sister who I shared a room with got mum but she found nothing. Another story in that same house, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw these tiny people running around the floor, but they were shadow like. Like 3D shadows. I know it wasn't a dream because I made my sister take me to mum and dad and I slept in their room. I saw them again but my sister was at camp. But my dad woke up at like 2 in the morning to get ready for work. He was in the kitchen making breakfast so I slept in the lounge room. I know that was real because wisps were flying from the floor and I touched one and it reacted to the touch. The last experience was I heard my dad say good morning to me. He wasn't home. Ever since we moved from that house I haven't seen anything paranormal. Except sleep paralysis. Which doesn't see it. Redditor 49, I lived in a house that was 100 years old. Several things happened. One night while my wife then girlfriend were asleep, a large decorative hookah flew across the house. It launched like 8 feet. Nobody in the room, cat was on the bed cat jumped up from sleeping on me when it crashed. Zero explanation. One day my wife was in the kitchen doing dishes. I hear a woman's voice say something, but it was unclear. I said what was that honey? Her response was I heard it too. Nobody lived there with us, open floor plan, it it was whispered between her and I. One night I'm up on the computer, not super late. Suddenly kitchen cabinets all start slamming in a weird order. Slamming repeatedly. 
I finally spoke to whatever it was, and asked it to stop, we wanted to all live together. Something like that. When I said that there was a pause, then one large cabinet opened wide, slowly, and started to slam, but right before it slammed shut it stopped, and closed gently. There were other incidents too that were smaller that I didn't include. All within the first month. But nothing crazy after that incident with the slamming where I said we wanted to live together. Nothing at all, until we were moving out. My son was born, and we had just bought a new house. All the activity seemed long ago two years had passed, a marriage, and a baby. All activity happened in the first month or so, and it seemed like a distant dream. Then when we were moving, things with lights turning off on me would happen. Once I was leaning in a closet to grab things and it felt like I was pushed in. The closet door slammed shut sliding door, so no big deal. But I'm the closet my cell phone started malfunctioning and I couldn't even turn on the flashlight. My brother came with me to grab one last heavy item. The whole house was cleared. As we are leaving he looks back in. There was a baby toy I didn't recognize just sitting in the middle of the floor we had just walked across. I swear it wasn't there just seconds before. My brother said I'll grab it. My response no, don't touch it. He knew the stories. He looked at me and suddenly said good call. And we left. Never went back. It's so strange writing these stories down now. This was 10 years ago. Redditor 50, this is my dad's story. Growing up he was always afraid of dogs didn't like them but he would never tell us why. He would always tell us to ask Abuelita our great grandmother. He grew up in a small remote village in Mexico and once when we were visiting his hometown, everyone was sharing ghost stories about the town and their own experiences. We asked to hear why our dad was scared of dogs and this is what we were told. Apparently one night when my dad was fairly young maybe around 10 or so a dog had gotten into the house. Stray dogs aren't uncommon and there was courtyard in the center of the house or so. The older men would sleep with a machete nearby the front door and by the courtyard door in case an intruder tried getting in. So apparently two of my uncles woke up to this dog in the house and it had glowing eyes. They didn't know if it was a sick dog or had rabies so they killed it with a machete and left it in the kitchen to clean up in the morning. Well in the morning the dog was gone. There was no blood or anything. Fast forward a year or two later and my dad is taking the trash out to the backyard which is beyond the courtyard or something and there's this big black dog on the roof across from him with glowing red eyes. Apparently the dog starts talking to him, telepathically or otherwise, calling for it to come to me several times and my dad finally bolts back into the house. The story seems too crazy to be made up and I heard it from several older family members and also explains why my dad never liked dogs. There were plenty of other paranormal things that would happen in this house and in the town in general. Redditor 51. So, I work in a stupidly old pub in the arse end of nowhere in the UK. In summer we get absolutely rammed and it wasn't uncommon, as the head chef, for me to still be in the kitchen on my own at 2-3 am. There were plenty of staff stories about the pub being haunted but I never paid them too much attention as they all seemed a little bit wild and didn't sound like they'd be out of place in a low-budget horror film. Anyhow, it's about 3 a.m. and I'm the only person left in the pub and have been for several hours, I'm just finishing up for the night and have started mopping. I always mop twice at the end of the day, once with a lot of water so the dirt lifts, then once with a dry mop to get it all off the floor. So I've done my first run with the mop and the floor is soaking wet. Whilst mopping I have to kind of back out of one of the exit doors onto the pub floor to be able to reach every spot. I go outside to let the hot water and chemicals do their job and I light up a cigarette. About halfway through it I hear a sound like one of the doors close inside the kitchen. Now, where I'm standing has a view to all entrances and exits into the kitchen and I would definitely have seen a person walking through and using a door so I think nothing of it and assumed I was hearing something. I finish my cigarette and go back inside to dry mop. I once again have to back out of one of the doors onto the pub floor and as I do so, I look down onto what should be a dry wooden floor. Only it's not because there are wet footprints there. Some are mine, but the others are from someone barefoot. I'm not ashamed to say I got out of there pretty sharpish and drove home at a speed likely to put me in prison if I was caught. I checked the CCTV footage from that time when I was in the next day, 
no movement on the cameras at all. Redditor 52, I swear to God, when my dad was driving me home from school one day, I saw a spinning, floating cube that was moving the same speed as our car. I will not deny that I saw it, because I saw IT clear as day. Redditor 53, about to go to bed at my grandparents. Alone on the gallery. Creepy moonlight and fog rolling through the fields. I was about 10 14. I look at the stars and I see one star dancing from star to star. Bounce bounce. Move down. Bounce bounce. Move down. I couldn't believe it. I looked away for a second to make sure I wasn't seeing things. Look back up and yup. The star kept dancing. Redditor 54. My house England was built just after the war. The surrounding three houses all had their residences die. Our house is just off. The feeling, always cold and noises. I have a baby toy in the loft that will start singing randomly early in the morning. There is no way I'm going up there to stop it. My neighbor's cat got hit by a car across the road purposely and I have seen a black cat running through my house. I know it's that cat because she had an accident and her tail was cut off. I explained to the neighbors who also said they had seen her run through their house too. I followed more like ran after her into my outhouse where she disappeared. Things getting lost or moved. And a photo threw itself off my wall the other night and pushed down two family photos. I call the house ghost Neagle. Redditor 55, I keep telling this story, but what the hell, why not? So, this was back in 2009, 2010 or so. I worked as an ERRN at Mills Peninsula in Millbrae. It was during the swine flu outbreak, and we were especially busy with urgent flu cases. I was pulled for the first time to the fast track ER at Mills Health Center, which we were using like an urgent care. Performing rapid tests for symptomatic flu patients, I was working with this super cranky battle axe, let's call her Esther. Esther didn't like anybody. But I didn't have time to try to make friends. It was freaking busy. The fast track ER was on the first floor in a U-shaped setup. Reception at the bottom of the U, the nursing station behind that, two hallways of rooms on the outsides of the halls. On the inside of the U was a makeshift lab you could walk through to the other side, then a big room on each side that we kept supplies in. Blankets, bedpans, that sort of stuff. This unit had formerly been the inpatient surgery ward and those rooms in the middle had been set up with call lights at each of four beds. But the call bell system was disabled. It wasn't even hooked up to electricity anymore. We had this new system, that was attached to the computer system with our badges as sensors. The old analog call bell system was just a box that was fixed to the desk at the nursing station. So in the room where we usually had supplies, we actually had patients in it that night. Four patients, with curtains as dividers. No real privacy, but we were only using these rooms to keep patients in while they awaited their rapid flu test results. One hour, max. There was a huge influx of people, and we were discharging at quite a clip, too. So to cue the receptionist up that a bed in that big room was ready for a new patient to be put in it, we'd pull the curtain back so you could see the empty bed and fix it to the wall to stay open. If the curtain was pulled to obscure the entire length of the bed, there was a patient in there. We're turning and burning. STG, this is one of the busiest shifts of my life. Almost as bad as a 4th of July on a weekend. But at about 2 AM, it starts to slow down. We decide we're going to stop using the big four bedrooms. So at this point, no one is in there. The curtains are pulled back so you can see all the beds, lights in the room are shut off. We've still got 10-12 patients in the hall beds and when I go to get a blanket for one of them, the curtain in my four bedroom in the back is pulled around the fourth bed. Indicating someone has put a patient in there for me. I go up front and go to Esther Hay, I thought we weren't using the four bedrooms anymore. She confirmed it. We aren't. So how come somebody put a patient in there for me? I asked her. So I go back there. Pull the curtain back. No patient. Weird. I pull the curtain all the way to the wall again and tuck it behind the bed to keep it there. Not 15 minutes later, I pass the room again. Curtain is drawn down around the bed. Like all the way down and around the bed. It didn't just fall and hang loose where it fell. 
It's been pulled out about 10 feet in length, to go the entire length of the bed and then down and around the foot of the bed, and then stopped where it would need to turn again to go back up the other side. Okay, WTF? I go in there and pull back the curtain to look. Again, no patient. What the actual fuck? So like 4 a.m., we have no more patients and it's just me and Esther and the receptionist at the window. It's time to do whatever shift checkoffs we need to do, and Esther is walking me around the department, showing them to me. First time at Mills, remember? We pass by my four bedroom. The curtain to the fourth bed is drawn down around the bed again. Okay, now I know someone is fucking with me. I'm kind of exasperated, and pull the curtain open again, and fix it to the wall. Esther is, well, studying me. So I figure it's her. She wants to make me lose my shit. I don't. We keep on doing what we were doing, like not a half hour later, I'm replenishing stock in the other rooms, and I go into the big room again to get I don't know what. The curtain is drawn down around that bed again. And I have to fix it again. Okay. I am done with this lady. I march right up to where she's sitting on her ass at the nursing station, thinking I'm gonna call her on this beal shit. I go up there and kind of start going off on her. Look, I know you don't get along with others, but maybe you should stop fucking with people, huh? Maybe if you didn't do that, other people and you might get along? You think? She looks at me. Asks me what I mean. I tell her she knows damn well that she's pulling that curtain in that room making me think I've got a patient in there. Her doer, funny joke, oh. You haven't heard. There's a ghost in that room, a ghost, she tells me. Straight-faced. Almost somber. Matter of fact, actually. Yeah, back in the day, on a busy shift I guess like in the 70s or 80s, there was a drunk guy brought in by ambulance who they figured just needed to sleep it off. They put him in that fourth bed, in the big room in the back where they forgot about him. And he choked on his vomit in his sleep and died. He's still in there, or his ghost is, she says. Then I STG, like almost on cue the call light goes off for that room. Chirp chirp chirping. The call light. The one that's not even hooked up to electricity. I can hear it. So can she. And the light for that room, bed 4 is lit up on the console. Sure as shit. The console that's not even plugged in. She just looks at it, and then looks at me, arms folded, one eyebrow goes up. I was still feeling exasperated at this point. I hadn't finished chewing her out. Those old call light systems can only be shut off from the bedside. So I have to go back there to turn it off. And I do. And that curtain is pulled back down, obscuring that bed. I had just pulled it back and tucked it behind the bed, between the bed and the wall, not even two minutes ago. She was the only other person there other than me and the receptionist who sat in the window the whole time and never walked past us like she'd need to in order to get to that room. Esther had not gone behind my back and pulled that curtain around the bed again, either. I sort of got it just then. I felt like I was being sent a message. And I said, out loud, look, I'm sorry that happened to you, okay? but I'm not going to forget I've got a patient back here. I'm not going to just leave someone back here without checking on them. I promise. It was like the guy who died was just making sure someone did rounds back there. I could almost feel it. Hey, check on me. Esther had followed me. You're not scared? She asked. Nope. What should I be scared of? A ghost using the call light and just being generally annoying? Good, she said. I'll tell them that you can come back here and work with me. High praise, coming from Esther. And when he goes upstairs, you can go up there and calm them down, too. Yeah. Our ghost roamed. Up on the same day surgery failure ward people who were supposed to go home but failed discharge criteria stayed there overnight. He liked to spin the office chairs at the nursing station. Just trying to keep you on your toes. I never experienced anything else. Just the multiple curtain pulling, call bell lighting, that one time. But whenever I got pulled to Mills, I went in and said hi. I think, if you remembered he was there, he didn't feel the need to get your attention. If you didn't remember he was there, well, 
prepare yourself for a ghost shenanigans all night. Redditor 56, I've got a few. I'm 5 years old and my mom and I just moved into a new house. It's always been just me and my mom at this point in my life. I was basically raised by my grandparents cause she worked so much but no dad and no one else lived with us in the new house. I'm laying in my bed late at night like Nickelodeon had switched to Gorge Lopez late and from my door I could see the whole living room. All of the sudden a big shadow rolls into the living room, human shaped and about my mom's height. I quietly yell out for my mom and the shadow's head turns to look at me and it has glowing green eyes. I hid under the covers for like 5 minutes and when I peeked out it was gone so I ran to my mom's room. She was out cold. Ever since I see this thing every time I move houses. Sometimes I see it just walking around in the day or sitting at my diner table, lounging on the couch, in the backyard, etc. It's never seemed hostile just, lost? So I don't mind him much anymore but sometimes he scares the duck out of me. This one is just kinda weird but not really paranormal. So I read tarot and I was giving my friend Jack a love reading. She was with this guy who she'd been on and off with for years. The reading basically said that there was infidelity in the relationship and she was going to go through a big change because of it. She jokingly called her boyfriend and told him about it and brushed it off. A week later she's sobbing on the other end of a phone call to me after she found out he was sleeping with another girl. Redditor 57, when I was little, my friends and I were really into scary stories like Bloody Mary, summoning ghosts, and the like. One day, as a dare, we were screwing around speaking gibberish and promising our souls to the devil if we could see a ghost. That night, I went to the garage to get something and I swear to God I saw a blue orb. Floating in the middle on the garage. Everything felt cold like a breeze had come in. I turned on the lights so fast and refused to go in the garage. Tried telling my parents but they don't believe in ghosts. Since then, I've been afraid of being alone in the dark in my own house but also becoming addicted to horror stories and creepypasta for a while. Redditor 58, this happened during a trip to Japan. Halfway through our trip, my friend, boyfriend and I stayed at an Airbnb in Osaka. It was really late at night and we quietly entered the building's lobby with our luggage. Above the elevator doors we noticed a mostly black television screen with a faint light glowing in the corner. After pressing the up button, the television screen lit up to reveal an empty elevator. The faint light glowing in the corner turned out to be a screen that shows what floor you're on. I found the television creepy, but didn't tell my boyfriend and friend how I felt at the time. We finally let ourselves into the fifth floor studio apartment. The guys decided to head back out to get drinks from a nearby vending machine, but I decided to stay and unpack. Soon after, I heard them at the door frantically trying to get inside. They explained that on the way down, the elevator was acting strangely. Elevator stopped at fourth floor. Doors opened. Doors closed. Elevator stopped at third floor. Doors opened. Doors closed. Elevator stopped at second floor. Doors opened. Doors closed. At this point, they said they were looking at each other unsure of what to make of it and then getting ready to defend themselves against whoever or whatever was messing with them. Elevator stopped at first floor. Doors opened. Nobody was there. After being reunited inside the apartment we started to quietly unpack and unwind. It wasn't long before the doorbell went off. I don't know how to describe the next few seconds, other than synchronized panic. I held a finger to my lips, motioned for the guys to check, and tiptoed to turn off a nearby light. The guys carefully made their way to the door. They checked the peephole. Nobody was there. I didn't sleep well that night. The next night, our friend decided to go drinking with some other friends, so it was just me and my boyfriend at the apartment. My boyfriend had fallen asleep and I was hanging up laundry to dry. Then the doorbell rang. Without thinking about the previous night, I assumed it was our friend. I checked the peephole immediately, but all I saw was an empty hallway. I freaked out and woke my boyfriend. I didn't want to make any noise, so imagine me whisper shouting and gesturing wildly. He checked the peephole, and even went out into the hallway. Nobody was there. On our last night, we started packing up for our trip back to Tokyo. I was in a real daze, seated at a table covered with my clothing and souvenirs. 
I wasn't doing anything productive, and the guys were nearly done packing. Then I noticed something glowing inside a plastic bag. I thought it was my phone so I reached inside, but then I realized it was a Gashapon toy light, still inside the taped up plastic capsule. I held the capsule in my hand and the toy kept flashing away. The guys finally realized what was going on, and we all just stared at it with wide eyes. My friend then said, let me see that. And once he grabbed it away from me, the toy light turned off. The guys then took turns shaking and inspecting the toy within the taped capsule, but were unsuccessful in getting it to light up. After the trip, I opened up the capsule by peeling back the tape and popping it open. To use the toy light, you needed to remove a carefully placed sticker on the toy, pull out this tab, and turn on a switch. TLDR, strange things happen at Airbnb in Osaka, Japan. I made this face most of the time. Redditor 59, this is a story my dad told me about his childhood. When he was around 15 one night around 11 or something he was returning to his home from his aunt's home on cycle. When he was near a graveyard that was in the way of his and his aunt's house a screw fell from his cycle's tire. He started looking for the screw on road in the middle of the night without light. He cannot go home without it because his home was too far away and there was no mechanics nearby. He was unable to find the screw. When he was about to give up and start walking home with his cycle. He saw a tall man who asked him if he needed help. He explains the man the situation. The man moves a few meters away from his place and picks up a screw from the ground. He then puts it back in my dad's cycle and tightens it by bare hand. My dad thanked him and went home with a thought in his mind that he'll go to the mechanic's shop in the morning and get the screw perfectly tight. The next morning he went to the mechanic and told the mechanic what happened and asked him to tighten the screw. When the mechanic tried to tighten the screw he was unable to do that. He told my dad that the screw was completely tightened. The fact that it's obviously not possible for a normal person to do that and my dad didn't see that man's face makes him believe he encountered a ghost that night. Redditor 60, random taping on my metal bed frame over the course of a year also my room would get pitch black like an abnormal pitch black couldn't even see my hand in front of me. I had a lady who does exorcisms come over and get rid of it. She said it was a bad spirit trying to make me feel comfortable around it so it could possess me, she did some stuff and just like that it was gone I finally got a good night's sleep. Redditor 61, this happened recently to us. My BF and I were watching a movie in bed together. It was a comedy luckily, I don't think I would be sleeping at his place anymore if it were a horror movie. The bed is in the corner of the room. My BF hung these pull-up racks on the wall next to the bed which we mostly use as drying racks for clothes and wet towels. That evening a towel was just hanging there as was a pair of jeans. There was space between the two items which is important for the next part of my story. So we were laying in bed watching the movie when suddenly we both caught a movement from the corner of our eyes. The towel was swinging from left to right. Not like when the wind passes through it, but the entire towel was moving right before our eyes. We watched it swing for what felt like an eternity. The jeans however was not moving at all. It was like something passed through the towel. We had the windows and doors closed so it couldn't have been anything else. We were pretty shaken up, I had some trouble sleeping as well that night. Redditor 62, well, more creepy than paranormal, but when I was very young, probably 6 or so, I had a large Grover doll in my bedroom. It was propped up on a table and for some reason, one day I could feel it staring at me, and I stared back, and I was just scared and locked in unable to pull myself out of this staring contest, and then it fell over. I freaked out, screaming and ran out. This doll had probably been there for days, and decided to fall over at this particular moment. Redditor 63, for months I was seeing several dark hooded figures in my room late at night. They would come through the walls where the room was the darkest and would head straight for my bed. They didn't walk they sort of floated around. They spoke to me telepathically and told me everything was okay and to not be afraid, but I was terrified. One of them would usually puts its hand on my head to comfort me. Their skin was dark like a shadow and they had glowing red eyes. I only saw them for a few months and then never saw them again. This was when I was young, like 8 or 9. 
I've had sleep paralysis as an adult and I wonder if that's what it was. Redditor64, live in a small town where a civil war battle took place, albeit a very small battle. My good friend growing up lived on the more uppity historical district that had all the pre-Civil War era houses. I was super excited to be able to stay with him because they had a decent shed looking building in the backyard. All brick, one window. They had it renovated, put carpet, a small bathroom, a kitchenette and a small living area with a full bed that pulled down from the wall. As a 11 year old boy with a Nintendo 64 and all night access to a TV and snacks, and being from a lower middle class family, I was pumped to stay in it. The inaugural River Boys 64 hideout. We even painted a small fucking sign saying that to hang in the window. Wild imaginations, I know. All goes well for the start. We crush code Red Mount Dew and snacks. Play Mario Kart and party as well as 007 for hours. TV as loud as we want, AC as cold as we want. We start to turn everything off and lay down to go to bed. Him and I just shared the full-size bed. Not long after we lay down, we start hearing chains rattling. Not very loud but not quiet either. Then comes a low hum, like a dozen people softly humming a hymnal. I have no idea how long it lasts, but being in so much fear it felt like forever. We laid there not saying a word after it ended, both of us terrified. After a little bit we start whispering about how we need to get back to his house. Literally flung open the door and just ran as fast as we could. We slept on his parents' floor that night. We told them about it, they heard nothing and had no idea what it could have been. After being scared about it for a few days we kind of just forgot about it. Senior year 2004. About 7 years later. We have to do a report on the town's history from the Civil War era. We could choose any topic we want and write about it. I wrote about the fact we had 32 saloons and two churches in five blocks of our downtown during the Civil War era. There was a girl in class they report about slave owners in our town. One of the facts she brought up was that out of the 17 homes in the historical district, 16 of them had slave quarters. She had gone around town and taking pictures of all the old slave quarters. One of the pictures that comes up on the PowerPoint is my friend's house. And there it was. What I thought was the large shed they had renovated was the old slave quarters. She had a picture of the front of the quarters. There in the window was a sign that read River Boys 64 hideout. I am pretty sure my jaw hit the floor and I turned whiter than snow. Shook me to my core. That memory is seared into my mind. Edit, spelling and date correction. It's an estimate. So yeah, Redditor 65, high school retreat. We had to sleep in some old house overnight that was previously owned by the landowner around the school tradition. It was a huge villa type home. History of the house was it was owned by the rich guy who died not in the home and his wife donated the home to a cloister of nuns who converted it into a hospital for TB patients before converting it into a school. There are no records if anyone died or not or were buried on the grounds bear in mind this pre-med records. School staff had stated there were cold spots, whispering, and one woman working late saw a little girl reflected in a bathroom mirror out of the corner of her eye. She turned her back for one second only to hear something shatter only to find the mirror had cracked. So of course with these stories and about 40 plus girls half who were less than happy to be there and the other half wanting to play Ghostbusters no one was getting any sleep. My friends and I were in the midst of telling the others to keep it down, when there was a loud, slam, in a hallway that lead to the bathroom. The room went cold and there was low, almost growling sound. My hair stood on end. Only the promise from the chaperones that any student found out of bed would be suspended for a day keep in mind the home was old and had much of the original furniture fixtures so they wanted people not to damage anything prevented everyone from running out of the room. Everyone eventually fell asleep from sheer exhaustion. The next morning, the chaperones woke us up angrily asking why in the heck spent the night running back and forth in the hallway. Thing was, no one had gotten out of their sleeping bags. A friend of mine went to chaperone the next year and asked the ghost some questions. Turns out, there is something there and I am afraid that she invited more in. Redditor 66, this was sometime during the 2020 quarantine. It happened to be one of the only times I was home alone. 
My dog and I were in the basement because that's where my Xbox was at the time. All of a sudden I hear something going through a full trash bag, thinking it's my dog I go upstairs to stop him. But then I remember he's downstairs with me and the noise was upstairs. So I decide to just take my dog for a walk. Thankfully I don't live in that house anymore cause I have a lot of stories of that house be besides this one. Redditor 67 I awoke in the middle of the night and saw a tilde ghost tilde sweatshirt hanging on the back of my door. Redditor 68 Not a good scary story but it bothers me cause I'm not into any of this shit. I was gifted a cat when I turned 6, she was the sweetest thing. She passed at a good age and I swear plus 15 years later I still distinctly hear her scratch her nails on the carpet and wake up feeling the weight of her curled around my head. I really don't believe in ghosts or afterlife but goddamn if it doesn't feel like she's still here sometimes. Redditor 69, so hi I'm Japanese and when me and sister was home one day we heard a loud tap on back window, sister was very scarred. So I went to go check but nothing there. After I went back to watch TV we heard sound again, sister and me now really scared. I waited for a while and thought must be prank from friend. But few minutes later the tap started happening again and again like tap tap tap. Me and sister were scared. But finally it stopped. Me and sister happy. We continue watching TV and then my grandma I was at grandma place, her name Tomoko, came in house and greeted us with some items from shop. We explained to grandma Tomoko what happened in terror. She got suddenly scared and she told us to put papers on all Y dows and don't look outside. I asked her what it is, but she said not to worry, that night she told me go to sleep and she keep four rice bowls on each corner, and put paper on window like living room. She said don't come out of room until tomorrow 12 am, and no matter who calls me not even her, don't come outside room. My grandpa returned from work after. Then my grandma tell him and he got very scarred, he was very worried. But after I went to sleep I heard tap 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 on window throughout the night. I was scared. But I'm 21 now. Nothing has happened after tap 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 inside. And anyone else in Japan had this scary moment? Sorry bad English, I'm improving. Redditor 70, bro this was when I was 6 or 7 I was in my sister's room where she had a huge windows it was closed and no air could have come through. A picture frame was in her bolting and it suddenly fell. My sister and I both felt a breeze go past us but how and to top it all off FFS the door swang open we couldn't sleep that night at all it was horrifying. Redditor 71, this happened when I was in kindergarten, I live in a small village so the electricity isn't available 24-7 especially during the monsoon season and this happened on one of those monsoon days where the electricity went off and my mom was taking a shower while I was sitting in the living room my mom told me to come with a candle and a lighter because I couldn't light up a candle that time I was scared yet I took it to her. Just so you know the bathroom is near the kitchen and there was a window when you entered the kitchen. Back to the story I went with the candle and lighter and gave it to my mom and when I was gonna go back into the living room I glanced at the kitchen window and noticed a line of people walking and they were all in a line. I freaked out and screamed my mom asked me what's wrong I told her to take a look at the window she said she saw nothing. This is still a classic story I bring up during family dinners and none believe it to this day sorry for my bad English. Redditor 72 I have 23 I've never posted on reddit before but lurk on several subreddits occasionally. My bf24 suggested I post my family's experiences as we have had our fair share over the years, I am not sure where to begin and English isn't my first language and I'm dyslexic so apologies if this gets a bit messy so for backstory I have lived with my grandparents since high school cause a better space. With my parents next door one of those one house separated in two with separate entrances we live in the wood with no neighbors in rural northern Norway. Our house is on top of a Viking burial allegedly and multiple family members have passed away in the house over the decades both of which might help explain some of the things that have been happening so to the basic stuff, it's very common to hear noises in the house. From doors slamming to footsteps to a couple times what sounded like laughter I have been home alone before with the front door securely locked all night while my grandparents were on vacation only to come downstairs in the morning and find every single door wide open including the one leading to the washroom and the storage which are always closed, 
Not to mention I always make sure all doors are closed properly before going to bed when I'm alone in the house and while there is always some draft in old houses it can't just open doors by itself so we have no idea still how that was possible we have also had issues with stuff falling off shelves or frequently vanishing only to turn up in strange places to the point we have a running joke of my late great grandmother who passed away in the house in 2004 being the one borrowing stuff and we will kindly ask her to return it when she is done think small items like keys, eating utensils etc. Now on to the more freaky stuff. There has been two occurrences of my grandparents waking up in the middle of the night to something violently shaking their bed. We don't live in an area where visible or noticeable earthquakes can happen at all. My grandfather woke up one night to the figure of what he called an angel watching over him from the corner of his bed only to vanish after a minute of staring at him. And another time he swore he saw his dead mother watching him from the doorway in the living room. Mind you both of these were only months before he fell ill and later passed away. Worth mentioning he has always been sharp and clear-minded. What killed him was his failing lungs from previous lung cancer mixed with pneumonia my little brother when he was just a toddler would on several occasions point at an empty doorway and ask who the man in black was and I myself has seen a tall man in black out of the corner of my eyes several times always in doorways before vanishing when I look again for as long as I can remember several family members have refused to stay the night cause they swear they feel like they are being watched and I myself has felt that crawling at the back of my neck too many times also our dogs over the years will freak out completely and bark terrified at the air sometimes now in November last year is when things got a bit crazy. My grandfather fell deathly ill and had to be picked up by an ambulance while unable to breath for weeks after we would have weird stuff happening every day as if our invisible guests were freaking out I would wake up to the sink turned on in the bathroom next to my bedroom. My PC or other electronics would also turn on by themselves at night after I had gone to bed. Things would fly off shelves and crash to the floor all the time and doors would slam by themselves but the thing that scared me the most was one night while I was laying in bed trying to sleep something punched the mattress next to my head so hard I felt my mattress dip down it calmed down over time but it was genuinely stressful to deal with so my question is, are we being haunted by concerned relatives? Redditor73, I have so many stories but lil try to stick to this one. My brother and son are two years apart. Well at the time my son was about 8 months old and I was at my grandparents babysitting my brother. My brother was sitting on the floor in front of this old timey floor model TV that they'd had forever. I was fixing lunch with my son on my hip which the island in the kitchen faced the door to the room my brother was in so he was in my direct view. I told my brother lunch was ready come get his plate, and he was like Brie I can't move and I just looked at him for a second and was confused. So I walked to the doorway of the room he was in to see what his deal was and my son immediately freaked out and was screaming bloody murder like someone was killing him. So I'm trying to calm my son and look around to see, well anything really. Nothing. I tell me brother to come here, as I back out of the room and he's like Bree help me I can't move. As soon as I stepped out of the room the baby calmed down a bit and I started yelling for my ex. Quickly tried to explain it to him. Meanwhile my brother looks terrified. So my ex walks into the room and I follow him, baby starts screaming I back out of the room. My ex gets down to my brother's level and was like buddy why can't you get up? He says someone is holding my shoulder. My ex looks at me and I'm looking at them and he tries to coax my brother to stand up and he's frustrated and yells he can't. So my ex physically had to pick him up. He said it felt like my brother weighed 100 pounds and it took effort to pick him up. But as soon as he stepped out of that room, he felt normal again. Redditor 74, I didn't believe in ghost. I was working for a small contractor as a project manager. We had a remodeling job for a woman to replace all floor coverings and paint. We were prepping the house for her to sail. Subcontractors removed the carpet and started painting. One bedroom the carpet was already removed. Some of the rooms had porcelain tiles that were to remain. Sheet plastic protection was used on the tiled floor areas. Painters called me and said we are hearing running footsteps across the plastic, loud booms in the crawl space and we saw a man walking in the backyard. I met the painters in the driveway pretty angry and we all went inside to check progress. Immediately upon entering something ran down a hall and across the sheet plastic and slammed the door. There were booms in the attic that shook the house. 
We did finish the house by purchasing a loud radio that played music non-stop to drown out the strange noises. Turns out the husband of the owner committed suicide in the bedroom with a shotgun weeks before. During final payment we asked her about the strange noises and she told us that we did an excellent job compared to other contractors that refused to work on the house. That explains the stains on the subfloor, wall and ceiling. Redditor 75, just gonna subscribe to this post real quick. Love these stories lol. Redditor 76, this is an experience my nan and granddad had. My dad was born very early, sometime around the 6th month mark and weighed somewhere around 2 pounds he was born in 1968. He was brought home and my grandparents' expectations were managed as he had many health complications due to how premature he was. One night my grandparents were in bed keeping an eye on their baby who slept in a cot next to the bed. They both sat up as my great-granddad who had passed years before, walks through the wall and stands over the cot. Both my grandparent witnessed this as clear as day. My granddad said out loud please don't take him, he isn't ready to go. My great granddad turned around and just walked back through the wall. A priest was called out not long after and up until around 15 years ago, there was holy water in a few rooms of my grandparents' house. Redditor 77 When I was a sophomore in college I was falling asleep when I felt something pushing my legs. It happened twice, I looked down at my legs, saw nothing. The third time I looked down something caught my eye to the side. There was a woman sitting on my desk 10 feet away from me. I tried to wake my roommate up and when I looked back she was gone. Didn't fall asleep for hours. Weird stuff happened in that dorm suite for the entire year. Three years later an old friend who was at this time an RA on the floor told me a student reported the exact same thing when he called. Redditor 78 there were times where my brain was getting a little desynchronized while I was falling asleep or waking up. So all of that were just hallucinations caused by my brain acting weird. I woke up midnight, couldn't move, but I've seen three orbs in my room, one left far upper corner, the second one right upper corner, flying in little circles and laughing, the third one was just on my right side next to the bed, but I could not see it well as I was laying on my back and couldn't look so far. I woke up in the night, sleeping on my left side, could not move, I felt like some force tried to lift me up, the pressure my body was applying to the bed was getting smaller and smaller till I felt I was barely touching it, then it immediately let go. Falling asleep could cause awesome sound bugs, like few quick deep bass kicks separated by half a second and flashes in my eyes. Or losing perception of my weight, or giving me fake informations that I am next to myself. But one thing gave me goosebumps, I woke up again to that shit, but it was early enough for my parents to be still in the living watching some TV, and I said that my brain has heard a scream in the attic this time. They said they did heard it too. No one was brave enough to go there that time. As the only entrace to there was from the house, there was no option anyone could be there. Also my sister when she was one she sometimes woke up with a panic scream pointing a corner in the room, there was nothing in there. We had no gas furnace in the house so CO intoxination wasn't an option. Redditor 79, TL, DR, family lived in haunted house in Germany for 6 years and crazy shit happened. So my family and I were living in Germany back in the 1980s, and we rented this nice old house I was 2 at the time and my mum was pregnant with my first brother things didn't really start happened until a few months after moving in, and it was pretty weird the house always had an odd feel to it. But you always get that when you move into a new place, right? Started with things not being where you last left them and kitchen cabinets being open the main thing was the stairs to the attic it was out in the open in the hall, right next to my brother's room it was only like 6 or 7 steps up until you got to the ceiling and a latched door you could get about 2 steps up and would immediately be filled with overwhelming dread and fear I can remember only thinking get out get out get out get out. Over and over until I could walk away friends would come over and go up the steps to sit down and would get this look on their faces and just start crying uncontrollably one night, when I woke up in the middle of the night to use the toilet, which was just across the hallway from my room after I was done I sleepily made my way back when I got hit with the coldest blast of air I had ever felt I was maybe 5 at this time my neck and back felt tingly and I felt like shivering I turned to look down the hall and saw the top half of a younger man walking down the hall and then turned to go down the stairs, 
but just straight up vanished I was pretty sure I dreamt the whole thing up tbh my mum claims that, while she was pregnant with my first brother, there was an older man that would stand in the doorway and had this aura of in her words pure evil and sickness my mum was super sick, but so was my dad on the nights the old man was around during her second pregnancy, she says that the younger man would stand in the doorway, but facing away from the bed, and that he made the room calm the old man never bothered my mum during this time, but after my second brother was born, he stopped guarding the door my first little brother would have awful night terrors, he would wake up screaming at the top of his lungs like he was being murdered after my second brother was born, he would have the same terrors, they would wake up screaming at the same time it was super weird I would have the same nightmare every night for the six-ish years we lived in that house. It was always me standing at the base of the stairs to the attic, and then the floor would vanish from under me and I would fall into total darkness there was no escaping it. I would fall into it every night another instance was when my mum told me to stop getting in the cupboards for snacks I told her I hadn't been in them. And she told me to stop lying or I'd be grounded she came and grabbed me later that day and took me to the kitchen, pointed to an open cabinet and scolded me I argued that I didn't do it and she then pushed me to go put my nose in the corner she then went back to the kitchen. And then all was quiet too quiet like that eerie quiet that creeps you out I turned around and my mum was just standing in the kitchen doorway, mouth wide open I asked her if she was okay, and she just continued to look in the kitchen, not moving I walked up to her and looked in to find every cabinet and door open we just stood there, shocked and scared my youngest brother was asleep upstairs in his crib and my other brother was with my dad at a doctor's appointment. The scariest incident was when my mum was setting the table in the dining room, Dad was watching TV, and my brothers and I were playing upstairs, and I heard crashing like, glass breaking I ran downstairs and saw my dad rush into the dining room and my mum was just standing there, the dishes broken on the floor in front of her my dad asked if she was okay and went to help her, and she says get out my dad stops, and just turns white as a sheet I guess they has been hearing the old man in their dreams nightmares as well telling them to get out of the house they didn't tell me till years later mum then started screaming get out over and over again, ripping things off shelves and throwing them to the floor the weirdest and scariest part was that she then started shouting at us in fluent German my mum barely spoke any German, just enough to get by she spoke French and English at the time and the look on her face was, weird it didn't look like my mother it's hard to describe, but she looked older and her eyes were so full of hate I had never seen my mother look like that before my father told me to run upstairs and shut the door, and he would come get us when it was safe I ran and hid with my brothers in their closet, terrified at what was happening my dad came up some time later, and I went to see my mother, she was sitting on the sofa sobbing I remember hugging her and she held me so tight I could barely breathe after that possession happened, my mum called in priests to try and cleanse the house the owner fully cooperated with us after my mum and dad told him, and claimed the old man we described was his grandfather, who had previously owned the house before dying in it he has no idea who the young man was though I can remember a priest coming over, and it was so bizarre he would start to pray to try and rid the home of evil or whatever, and every time something would happen the phone would ring, the postman would knock, my brothers would cry, a truck drove by with his horn going the priest persisted, but as soon as he started up the stairs to the second floor, he fell down them he claimed he felt two hands push against his chest, and then he said this was beyond him he left and we never heard from the church the final straw was when I was playing in my room and was standing in from of my large mirrored closet, and it fell on me luckily, my bed was right next to me, and it stopped the closet from crushing me. I was around six at this time there was no way for me to be able to tip this closet as it was butted up against the wall and was a heavy solid wood one that came with the house when we moved in not to mention I was standing away from it nearest to my bed at this point, we were all stressed out so much so that it was affecting my dad's work his boss pulled him into his office one day and asked him what was going on my dad had said he wouldn't believe him if he told him but I guess his boss persuaded him to turns out my dad's boss was a long time practicing Wiccan, and said he could help him not sure as to how that conversation went down, as my dad said he doesn't really remember all the details, but he remembers his boss explaining to him the process of cleansing the house and how he had done other ones before hours so the day comes when my dad's boss turns up to our house with a bunch of his fellow co-workers friends and the landlord showed up to help everyone gets a task to prevent the cleansing from being stopped like when the priest had tried my dad's boss and another guy go down into the cellar to start and gradually moved through the house my mom and I sat in the living room, 
and a friend had come to take my brothers to her place while this happened I can't remember why I was at the house tbh sorry these guys got to the attic stairs, shit got real weird the house felt awful like the air was buzzing with static and I felt sick my stomach my mother was feeling it too as I could see her gauging and trying hold everything down the guys opened the attic and started cleansing and you could hear things in the house moving not sure what it was. But it sounded heavy turns out that the source of all the things happening was an old armoire in the attic my dad told me the landlord recognized it as belonging to his grandfather before he died, and it was full of old clothes, knickknacks, and some Nazi memorabilia they all first tried to remove the armoire from the house, but it wouldn't budge so they took everything out of it, and it still didn't budge they thought maybe it had been nailed to the floor but found nothing holding it down they eventually called the other guys and six grown men could not move that armoire dad said it was the craziest thing he's ever seen in his life so my dad's boss and his other Wiccan friend decided to seal the armoire in a circle of salt and sulfur. Once they had completed that ritual, they finished the cleansing of the house and no lie guys, it was like the house side, it felt like a breeze blew through the house, like every door and window had been open on a windy day they weren't, Everything was closed during the cleansing and my hair even moved with it it was so weird then, silence not just audibly, but that uncomfortable, heavy feeling the house had always had was gone it truly felt empty it was such an odd sensation to me after the house had been cleansed, the attic was locked up and that was that no more apparitions, nightmares, fear around the attic steps, no more opening cabinets, and no more possessions even though it only happened the one time my parents were so happy that the people who helped out were invited over quite a few times my dad says he still talks to all of them to this day, and he said he still feels he can't ever thank them enough for saving us from that horrible nightmare he even became a Wiccan afterwards, and still casually practices, but not as much as he used to anywho, that's my long ass story of the haunted house I lived in as a child sorry it's so long, and I hope you enjoy reading about it.